Welcome back to the channel, gentlemen. It's that one unfortunate lady who clicked on this video thinking it was a yoga tutorial. Sorry, we're not going to be talking about yoga today. We're going to be talking about this little guy, the 22 ARC. So the 22 ARC, the whys. But why? Why would you want to go with the 22 ARC? Why? Why? Isn't the 6 ARC better because it's 6 is a bigger number? Well, kind of, yeah. If you're going to use it for deer hunting, go with the, the 6. Some some states don't even allow a 22 or a 224 caliber bullet for deer hunting, which is understandable. It's such a small, diminutive size bullet that it seems unethical to shoot a deer and hope that that deer dies from it. The 22 ARC is... Those of you know that I have a barrel coming in for this rifle. That's why I have this rifle with me. I don't have that barrel yet, but as soon as I do, expect videos on the 22 ARC because I'm kind of excited for it. When it comes down to it, the 22 ARC is going to be a more uh, niche little cartridge. It's going to be more tailored towards farm hunting and uh, long range shooting, especially long range shooting in the AR-15 platform. I have a bolt gun. I'm a little weird for it. Uh, those of you know why I have it in a bolt gun, you'll understand because uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the pressures that a bolt gun can handle versus the pressures in AR-15 with, and this is important, with a uh, 6 PPC or a 6.5 Grendel bolt face, the pressures are too much for that larger bolt face to handle because they have to remove the material. So they limit you at uh, 52,000 PSI and in this bolt gun I can run clear up to 62,000 PSI. So. The bolt gun's nice. I can run higher pressures because I hand load and do all that fun stuff. And I can accurize my loads to tailor what I need it for. So that's why the bolt gun, you know, as opposed to an AR-15. Quick question for you. Are you subscribed yet? Do you consider yourself a base person but yet not subscribed? Luckily, there's a, a very easy fix to make yourself a based person. And that's by hitting the subscribe button. Also, liking and commenting goes a long way too. So... Thank you for your time. But getting into it, what's the actual advantages of the 22 ARC over the 6mm ARC? Well, you're looking at a little less drop at 1,000 yards. It's not even that crazy of a difference. We're only talking about 1.6 mils difference at 1,000 yards. It's not crazy. And uh, that's quite a bit, but it's not like one is way, way faster shooting than the other. One's way, way flatter shooting, you know. It goes on for miles and miles and miles. No, it's not. Neither one of these cartridges are what you would consider a flat shooting cartridge. They're not your 22 250s or <clears throat> your uh, uh, 28 nozzlers or something along those lines where you think, oh man, that's a fast, flat shooting cartridge. These are not going to be fast, flat shooting cartridges. So if you're going to just point aim where you leave your scope the same and never touch your dials, never touch or never bother hold on holdovers or anything like that. These cartridges are not going to be cartridges for you because you will definitely need to be able to dial or to have a holdover with your reticle. So uh, keep that in mind. That's why when it comes down to it, the 22 arc really isn't that much better for just the layman to use because if you're out there and you're you're shooting out to 300 yards with a groundhog and you don't dial, you don't touch your scope, go with the 22250, because you're going to be more effective with the 22250 than a uh, 22 ARC. Because a lot of people don't dial. A lot of people just set their scopes at 100 or 50 yards and they never touch the scope. They never hold over. Or if they do hold over, they're kind of Kentucky windage, holding it out in the middle of nowhere, which is fine. People have done that for years and years, and they they are uh, successful with it. But if you do not dial and if you do not know your holdovers, these are definitely, definitely not going to be the cartridges for you, both the 6mm ARC and the 22 ARC. So not that much crazy difference between the velocities between these two. They're both not flat shooting cartridges. Now, as far as hunting goes, um, if you are willing or crazy enough or, or ambitious enough to hunt a deer with a 22 caliber bullet, this thing with a with a 95 grain bullet, this thing still has about a thousand foot pounds at 300 yards with a 95 grain bullet. So it's kind of doable. Like it, it surprised me once I started looking into the numbers. It does hold its weight. It does hold its its power out to longer ranges. And that's kind of why Hornady foolishly enough said that this thing is comparable to the the 22250, even though it's not. And the 22250, the fact that it's so flat shooting, is clearly superior to this to the everyday layman who doesn't dial or doesn't hold over. 
Now, granted, a lot more people are dying, dialing and holding over, and a lot more people are using rangefinders, so that's probably not going to be the case in 10 years. But who knows? The other thing is the recoil. So when the, the 22 ARC is going to have a little less felt recoil because the, the heaviest bullet that I found that is consistent and somewhat available is the Sierra Match King uh, 95 grain bullet. It's a nice little bow tail hollow point, real long slender bullet, high BC. It's great for that kind of an application, but it's still lighter than the, the 100 and 12 grains, the 107 grains that you can throw out of a 6 millimeter ARC. And because they're a little bit lighter, your felt recoil is going to be lower, which is kind of kind of sweet when you really think about it because these things don't have that much recoil to start off with, but then you shave off another few uh, pounds of felt recoil and dude, why not? That's awesome because now you're, you're dealing with a nicer uh, rifle that you can shoot for longer. You can shoot you know, a few hundred rounds in a day and not really feel it. Now that gets into barrel life. I'm willing to bet that barrel life is going to be better with the six millimeter ARC. Being that bore size to powder capacity is really kind of one of the biggest determining factors of barrel life. Uh, the 22 ARC, of course, is going to burn out its barrel faster. How much faster? Who knows? That's a, that's a variable that we won't know until we get a rifle in and we can literally shoot it until it burns out. Uh, with how much I shoot this uh, shot this rifle, I wouldn't be surprised if I don't burn this rifle barrel out in, say, two years. So it's going to stick around for a while. It's going to be with me for a while. So things considered, if you already have a 6mm ARC, should you swap over to the 22 ARC? Well, no, not really. I don't think so. I'm already doing a barrel swap anyways because this is the factory, you know, chromoly steel barrel that came with this rifle. And I'd rather have a match grade stainless steel barrel over this chromoly barrel. When it comes down to it, I, I'm rebarreling not because the cartridge itself is necessarily what's making me rebarrel. It's just that this barrel's due for rebarreling anyways. And the 22 ARC is coming out. And so I'll try something new for a little bit. You know, I'll experiment with it. Maybe... Maybe if there's problems with the bullets or something, I can swap back over to the 6mm uh, ARC, and there's no harm, no foul, because it's just a barrel swap. Granite barrels are not cheap anymore. I mean, 600 bucks a barrel. Ouch. Uh, yeah, they, uh, yeah. The old days where people could, could buy four or five barrels and figure out which one shot the best and then keep that barrel uh, for competition shooting, that's unfortunately not the not the fact anymore and uh, yeah if you know anything about the 22 russian if you know anything about the 6 ppc the 22 ppc and how it compares to the 22 arc you'll, you'll know that these cartridges are in fact not really new in fact they've been around since the 70s and the 80s with the uh, 22 uh, ppc and the 6 ppc nothing here is new the hornady Pretty much just took a 22 Grendel and labeled it and, and recognized it. It's This was a Wildcat. This existed before. And so you have to consider the roots of what is going on because the root of a 22 PPC or a 6 PPC, like the uh, 6.5 Grendel is based on, those are very, very accurate cartridges. Uh, we're talking holding all the world records within uh, 200 yards. Um, accurate cartridges. There's nothing more accurate for 100 yards than a 22 PPC, and there's nothing more accurate for 200 yards than a 6 millimeter PPC. So you have to consider that factor when you look at these. Is are the the roots are what what we're coming from good? Now, as I'm talking about this, you have to consider one other factor that these cartridges, the 6 ARC and the, the 22 ARC, were designed for. AR-15s. They were not designed for bolt guns with real tight precision chambers. So you may run into problems if you run real hot loads. If you expect great accuracy, you know, you're you're running one inch groups like a 6 PPC, you might not be able to achieve that kind of accuracy with this rifle just because the chambers are looser. Good news is people like Preferred Barrel Blanks and uh, some other barrel manufacturing companies are now offering a six millimeter ARC match chamber where you can even select how much space, how much area you want around the neck, how much clearance you want around the neck. 
So there is a silver lining going on here, and it's actually kind of cool because we could have a more modernized 6PPC here in a little bit. It's just that it's not quite there yet because um, the match chambers are not really wide or mainstream. One last thing before I go. If you... So the big difference between the ARC cartridges to the, the PPC cartridges, the biggest difference is the chamber, how tight that chamber is, uh, how much free bore you have for those long bullets to stick into the, uh, the, the barrel itself and the twist rate because it's a six ppc it's like a one in 14 twist or one in 13 twist it's really light twist rate so the the twisting of the bullet does not you know affect climbing into the wind as spin drift uh is a factor